name, and each of the seven fires manifests the seven lesser fires, making the 49 fires referred to by H. P. B. In the secret doctrine point, six to seven heavenly men manifest each three seven lesser entities, who form the psychic centers in their body in the same manner as they in their turn form the psychic centers in the Logos Bahana vehicle. Each of the seven fires, or Diva Lords, of a flame manifests for seven lesser Devas, who form the central fire, in consciousness of the substance of a subplane. It is with their mutual interplay and work that we are now concerned, or with the study of matter as it is affected and built into form through the medium of divine thought or will. Of the higher fires, the lords of the four higher planes, I do not seek to deal, for it only profits as good. Five the 49 Manus, they are the patrons or guardians of the rape cycle in the Mandan era, or day of Brahma. There are seven races in a world period, and there are seven world periods. 6 CS P I 567 632 A T R E A T I S E O N C O S M I C F I R E Study the construction of thought forms in the three worlds through the medium of Diva essences. These are vitalist and manipulated by the builders, the Dian Chohans, the heavenly men through the course of their life, through their knowledge of the Logoic will or purpose, and through the power of their psychic nature. Thus they are occupied in building the Logoic physical body, and in carrying out his plans in that body, in this way fulfilling the purpose for which he incarnated. Their work is infinitely greater than this, for it lies primarily on cosmic levels, but this is what concerns us, and all that we can, in any way grasp. Man in the three worlds of human endeavor works at two things. First, the building of his body of manifestation, a threefold body. Second, the construction of thought forms, which he builds of mental matter and vitalizes by desire, and which he builds within his aura, thus constructing a tiny system of his own. Both man, and the heavenly men, work in Diva substance, both cooperate with the Devas, both manifest will, psychic quality and intelligent activity as they pursue their work but a different lives, not only in degree, but in consciousness. Man works usually unconsciously, the heavenly men, on cosmic levels, work for the most part consciously. Herein lies a hint as to the stage of evolution of our logos. This matter is of real difficulty, for the subject is abstruse and profound. We will now leave these basic ideas, and deal more specifically with the devas with whom we are immediately concerned, or with the three groups I have outlined the Agnachadans, the Agnitrians, and the Agnishvadas. They are concerned primarily with the evolution of the dense body of the Logos, the liquid, gaseous and dense subplanes of dust. T-H-O-U-G-H-T-A-N-D-F-I-R-E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S 633 Cosmic Physical, or the three worlds of human endeavor, with the magnetic radiation of the Logos through his physical vehicle, and with the radiatory emanations of the particular heavenly man who is expressing himself through our planet. Finally they are concerned with the evolution of Consciousness 7 in the three worlds, and particularly with the individualization of the human unit of consciousness, and with the vitalization of the centers in the body of the heavenly man with whom we are peculiarly connected. The 
subject of our consideration now is the fire damage of the physical plane. Those great building damage who are working out the purposes of the logos in his dense, physical body. Let us get our ideas as clear as possible on this matter. In the following tabulation, the status of these devas will be apparent at a glance. Systemic. Name. Agnichidan. Agnidrian. Agnishvada. Cosmic Plane. Seventh Subplane. Cosmic Physical. Sixth Subplane. Cosmic Physical. Fifth Subplane. Cosmic Physical. Plane Nature Ruler. Physical. Densis. Concretion. Astral of the Varuna. Mental Gashes. Shitty. Agni. The Agnichadans. These are the devils who construct and build in matter of the gentle kind in connection with logoic manifestation. They function on the seventh subplane of the cosmic physical plane and are the producers of the greatest concretion. In the planetary body of our planetary logos they are the builders of the Earth, his densest form, and throughout the entire solar system they are the sum total of that activity and Vibra. Seven the lunar angels have to reach the plane of the solar angels. S. E. I. 203. They have to win immortality. S. E. 3. 518. 519. Self-consciousness is their goal. S. E. I. 205. 622. 634 ATRE ATIS on cosmic fire. Tion which demonstrates through what we call solid substance. Therefore, it will be apparent that under the law they will have a peculiarly powerful effect on the lowest subplane of the systemic physical plane, hence their esoteric appellation of the agnichadans of the inner or central heat. They are the totality of the lowest vibration in the cosmic physical vehicle. The Agnidrians are the builders on the sixth subplane of the cosmic physical plane, our systemic astral plane. They represent, as I have before hinted, the sympathetic nervous system in the lower physical body, just as their brothers of the seventh vibration represent the sum total of the circulatory or blood system. A hint to the student who is interested in the physiological key lies is the relationship between the two great groups of devas who build and construct the most objective portion of logoic manifestation, and the two groups of corpuscles which in their mutual interaction hold the body and health. There is an analogy also in the relationship between the devas of the astral plane and the motor and sensory nerves of the physical body. I will not enlarge upon this angle of vision. These devas have to do, in a very esoteric sense, with the nerve plexus in the A. Solar system, physical planet, planetary scheme, dense planet circa, human physical body, dense body, and are therefore a powerful factor in the eventual vitalization of the centers in man. The etheric centers, or the focal points of force of a heavenly man are on the fourth cosmic ether, the lunar plane. The astral plane is closely allied to the lunar, and is the etheric centers of our heavenly man, for instance, come into full activity, the force is transmitted through the astral correspond. T-H-O-U-G-H-T-A-N-D-F-I-R-E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S 635 Ends to the fourth physical ether, in which the centers of man exist. The Agnes 
Five stairs of builders on the fifth or gaseous subplane of the cosmic physical, and from the human standpoint are the most profoundly important, for they are the builders of the body of consciousness per se. From the psychic standpoint of occult physiology, they have a close connection with the physical brain, the cedar empire of the thinker, and as at this stage all that we can know must be viewed comma manisically, it will be apparent that between the sympathetic nervous system and the brain is such a close interaction as to make one organized whole. This microcosmic correspondence is of interest, but in studying these groups of devas at present we will view them principally in their work as systemic and planetary builders, leaving the student to trace out for himself the human analogy. He will learn thereby, having indicated certain lines of thought, we will now take up these groups one at a time and consider them. Chaitan's physical plane devas. These devas are the sum total of physical plane substance. This plane is, as we know, divided into two parts. The four ethers, four subplanes. The demonstrably concrete or dense three subplanes. We have here a subdivision of the seventh subplane of the cosmic physical plane making the lowest manifestation one that is divided into 49 subplanes or states of activity. For purposes of active work, the devils of the system are divided into 49 groups the 49 powers. The Agnichadans in turn are also divided into 49 groups reflecting the whole. 636 ATREATISE on Cosmic Fire. 1, 2, A, B, the Raja Lord, Shitty, the life of the physical plane. Three groups of Agnichadans concerned with the force or energy of physical substance. That electrical aspect which produces activity. The construction of forms. They produce the union of negative and positive substance, and thus bring into being all that can be seen, and touched in the exoteric and ordinary connotation. C. Aspect. The internal heat of substance which nourishes and causes reproduction. They form the purely mother. These three groups are subdivided again into seven groups which form the matter of each subplane, viewing that matter as the body of manifestation of one of the seven devas through whom the Raja Lord of the plane is manifesting. These seven groups are again divided into seven, making 49. The three groups function as follows. Group A on the first subplane. They are the sum total of the atomic matter of the physical plane. Group B on the second, third and fourth of their subplanes. They are the substance of those planes, the transmitters of prana, through which prana flows to the most concrete aspects of the reserve against the Han, or vehicle. Group C the lowest three subplanes. They are the devas who are the essences of all that is tangible, visible and objective. A very real distinction must be made by students between the centers and the remainder of the body, as they investigate the construction of the body of the solar logos or of the planetary logos. T-H-O-U-G-H-T-A-N-D-F-I-R-E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S 637 The centers are allied or connected with consciousness and are composed of self-conscious being and human romance. The remainder of the body is composed of Niva substance and yet the two together form a unity. The Diva units therefore far outnumber the human, and Diva substance is also feminine and negative, the human. Hierarchy being masculine, 
Through the positive activity of the centers, the negative diva substance is influenced, filled and energized. This is true of the solar logos, a planetary logos and a human being. Three types of force, therefore, play upon or through these devas. A. That energizing the devas of the first subplane, the atomic. This emanates directly from the first aspect of Brahma, or Agni, considering him as a self-conscious identity, the third person of the Logoic Trinity, and therefore spirit, soul and body himself in his separated essential nature. B. That energizing the devas of construction, or the form building group, this comes from the second aspect of Brahma, and is Prana, issuing from the physical sun, and working under the law of attraction, circa. That energizing the devas of the lowest three orders, emanating from Brahma in his third aspect. Thus in the dual force, or the aspects of matter itself, interacting the one upon the other, densest forms of all are produced. Yet these three function as one. Group C, Agnichadens. In considering these groups of Agnichadens, we must remember that we are dealing with that manifestation of the logos with which exoteric science is dealing, and that as regards Group C, science is already making fair progress in the accumulation of knowledge, it remains yet for science to. 638 ATREATISE on Cosmic Fire. Acknowledge the entified nature of substance, 8 9, and thus account for the life that energizes the substance of the three lower subplanes. This recognition by science that all forms are built of intelligent lives will come about when the science of magic begins again to come to the fore, and when the laws of being are better understood. Magic concerns itself with the manipulation of the lesser lives by a greater light. When the scientist begins to work with the consciousness that animates substance, atomic or electronic, and when he brings under his conscious control the forms built of this substance, he will gradually become cognizant of the fact that all entities evolve. Grades and of varying constitutions go to the construction of that which is seen. This will not be until science has definitely admitted the existence of etheric matter as understood by the occultist, and until it has developed the hypothesis that this ether is in differing vibration. When the etheric counterpart of all that exists is allocated to its rightful place, and known to be of more importance in the scale of being and the density of being, Essentially the body of the Ata identifies nature of all substances technically known as hylophilism. H P B says Hylophilism, when philosophically understood, is the highest aspect of pantheism. It is the only possible escape from idiotic atheism based on lethal materiality and the still more idiotic anthropomorphic conceptions of the monotheists, between which it stands on its own entirely neutral ground. Hylozoism demands absolute divine God, which would pervade the numberless active creating forces, or, creators, which entities are moved by, and have their being in, from that assert that divine God. Such active, creators, are known to exist and are believed in which is perceived and sensed by the inner man and the occultist. S. D. 2. 167. 168. 9. Anatomist and Entified Abstraction. S. D. I. 559 to 560. A. The informing entity.
entity of the system is the Logos. B. The informing entity of a plane is its Raja Lord. Such as Indra, Agni, Varuna, Shiti. C. The informing entity of a planet is its planetary Logos. D. The informing entity in the microcosm is a Dian Chohan. E. The informing entity in the causal body is the Divine Thinker. F. The informing entity in a physical atom is an elemental life. Fire is in all things. S. P. I. 146. 2. 258. A. The informing entity is fire. S. P. I. 145. 146. B. The matter of the form is permeated with fire. S. P. I. 112. Circa. The developing mind is cosmic fire. S. P. E. I. 114. P. H. O. U. G. H. T. A. N. D. F. I. R. E. L. E. N. T. A. L. S. 639. Life. Our vitality. Then the role is the scientist and the occultist will merge. H. P. B. Has said 10 that the dense physical is not a principle, and this point is frequently overlooked in connection with man and the logos. Its importance cannot be too strongly realized, for it has the effect of transferring the point of centralization, or of polarization in the case of man into his etheric body, composed of matter of the four higher subplanes of the systemic physical plane, and in the case of the logos, of the four higher subplanes of the cosmic physical plane. Is one of a very real complexity, for it involves the realization that, from the standpoint of the occultist, the lowest vibration with which he may concern himself is that of the systemic generic in its more lesser allied vibrations, similarly macrocosmically the lowest logoic vibration with which the greater adepts are concerned is the cosmic etheric. The three lowest systemic and cosmic vibrations are the result of reflex action on the part of negative substance for the lower three or negative to the higher four. Synchronous vibration, inherent in negative substance, the residue of an earlier system, and embodying therefore past karma for the logos and for man. Vibrations that are gradually being superseded by the imposition of a higher note, therefore for both man and the logos, they occultly form the body of death. This brings us to the point which we are seeking to make an end this third group of the lowest devas. They are very destructive where man is concerned, for they embody the final and therefore powerful vibration of the past system, the conscious activity of dense matter. Hence there is consequently a profound truth in the 10 CF E 2 621 640-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E Statement that man is at the mercy of the elements. Man can physically be burned and destroyed by fire. He is helpless before volcanic action and cannot protect himself from the ravages of fire unless in the initial stages of such evil endeavor. The occult importance of the war man wages on the fire devas for instance is very real in connection with the fire department in any city. The time lies far ahead as yet, but it will surely come when the personnel of these departments will be chosen for their ability to control the agitators when manifesting destructively, and their methods will no longer be that of water or the calling in of the water devas to neutralize. The fire devas but that of incantation, 
your knowledge of the sounds that will swing into action forces which will control the fiery destructive element. The third group of these devils is very definitely connected with the control of the Manu's department, and is a great devil associated with that department on this planet. Through their activity during certain cycles the entire surface of the Earth is changed through the medium of volcanic action. Continents are raised and submerged, volcanoes are active or quiescent, and thus the world is purified by fire. In their own department these Agnichatans are kept busy building the mineral forms through the agency of fire. They are the alchemists of the lower regions, and through contact with them, and through the knowledge and the words by which they are controlled, the future scientific alchemists, I mean this expressly in contradistinction to the idealistic alchemists of the past who work with minerals and with the lives embodied in all mineral forms. The secret of the transmutation of the baser metals into gold will be revealed when world conditions are such that gold is no longer the standard and hence the free manufacture of gold will not lead to disaster and THOUGHTANDFIRELEMENTALS 641 when scientists work with the life aspect, are with positive electrical life, and not with the substance or form aspect. We have seen that the work of the world's group of Agnichatans is to build continents by fire, to purify by fire during alternate cycles, and to construct the metals and the minerals. It is also concerned with the tending of the fires of the heart, or those fires which warm, cheer and produce visible conditions in a planet, and incidentally in a home. This is a very vital import, for it means that they are connected with the central basic fires in the bowels of the earth, with the central basic fire that nourishes and warms the physical forms of all the kingdoms of nature, and consequently with the Kundalini fire at the base of the spine in individual man. It is not advisable for us further to enlarge upon their functions. It should be noted that in connection with the matter aspect there is less to be said than on consciousness and on the hieroglyphic aspect of manifestation. The reason lies in the fact that exoteric science is slowly, yet steadily, finding out the nature of phenomena and discovering for itself the character of electrical manifestation. In their slowness of discovery lies safety. It is not wise nor right yet for the true nature of these different forces and powers to be fully known. Therefore, it is not possible for us to do more than indicate certain broad general lines. In due course of time, as the human family becomes centered in the higher, and not in the lower nature, and as the force from the higher planes can more easily impose itself on the lower, the facts concerning these lives and builders, their methods of work, and the laws of their being will be known. Knowledge of this time will be productive of two results. It would first of all bring the human family into the power, as yet blind and destructive of. 642-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-0-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E -E -E. Certain elementals, who are of a nature analogous to that of the physical body. Hence destruction of the form would ensue, or paralysis and insanity on a large scale would eventuate. Secondly, it would put power into the hands of certain of the brothers of the left hand path 11 and of a number of unconscious magicians, of whom there are quite a number who would use it only for selfish, evil and material ends. Hence no more can be said an end dense physical substance in its embodiers. The Agnichatans of the third group 
Emperor is yet a menace to man, and are only handled in formation and on a large scale by the head of the Manu's department through their own rulers, certain damage in the development equal to that of the sixth initiation. The occult hierarchy of our planet is primarily concerned with the development of self-consciousness in man, and with the intelligent interpretation of the happenings of nature, it is concerned with a wise cooperation with the building forces of nature, and the object of its main endeavor is the vitalization and activity of the centers in the heavenly man of our planet, and in the individual units of the human the occult hierarchy is a great force center, the heart, head, and throat of the heavenly man is these three centers function in a triple coordination, paralleling their activities along the line of consciousness and primarily consciousness or intelligence as it demonstrates through the third and fourth kingdoms is to be found a great hierarchy of devas who concern themselves with the development of that portion of the body of a heavenly man which is not included in the active centers. Perhaps some idea of what I seek to convey. 11 The left hand path is that followed by the black magician and by the brothers of the shadows. It originates in the use of the forces of nature for selfish ends. It is characterized by intense selfishness and separatedness, and ends in Avicii, the eighth sphere, the home of lost souls, are those shells of the lower man which have become separated from their individual or individual life principle. T-H-O-U-G-H-T-A-N-D-F-I-R-E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S 643 May be gathered from an illustration. The occult hierarchy is concerned with the unfoldment of the nine-petaled lotus in the heavenly man, and in man the former through reflex action between the cosmic physical and the cosmic mental while the great diva hierarchy is concerned with the permanent atoms, with the egoic body, and with the development of the spirilli. Thus the function of the Agni chains of the lowest furnaces macrocosmically and microcosmically will be seen and comprehended by the wise student. Agnichadin's group be near dealing with that important group of devas who are designated in some works as the devas of the shadows. Their function is primarily a fourfold one, and they are the basis of motion or of activity on all planes, which activity is produced by the interplay of the negative and positive aspects of Brahma, the manifested God. First, they are the builders of the etheric bodies of all sentient existences, and primarily of all the etheric bodies of men. Second, they are the transmitters of prana. Third, they perform a very definite function in the evolutionary process of linking up the four kingdoms of nature, being essentially the transmitters and transmitters of the lower into the higher. They build between each kingdom mineral, vegetable, animal and human that which in each case corresponds to the Antaskarana, or the bridge linking higher and lower manas, and which therefore is the channel for the transmission of the life from out of the lower human kingdom into the higher spiritual one. It will be found that between each of the different stages of consciousness, from the subconscious through the self-conscious to the superconscious, there is a period of linking, of building, and of bridging, and this is carried out by the agency of 644 ATREATISEONCOSMICFIRE. Certain groups of devas on all the planes. These three groups on the physical plane find their counterparts and their work paralleled on higher levels. The 
going to be remembered is that this work of bridging from one stage or from one kingdom to another has to be performed under the following conditions. A. As the result of an impulse emanating from the lower, or originating in the active desire of the lower to embrace or contact the higher. This is of paramount importance, for all progress must be self-induced, self-initiated, and be the result of an inner activity. B. As the result of reflex action from the higher stage or kingdom, it is brought about by the activity of the lower which calls for the response from the higher. All vibration, it must be remembered, travels along waves of living substance. C. As the result of extraneous stimulation produced by the activity of certain conscious powers, interested in the process of evolutionary development. All these conditions can be seen in the process of the initiation of man, and of his transference from the fourth kingdom into the spiritual. His efforts must be self-induced, for the effect of his own self-conscious endeavor, they will meet with a response from his superconsciousness. The atmic aspect or spirit in this dual interplay will be further aided by the guardians of the rites of initiation. Yet all three effects are felt in spirit. Matter, all proceed under the law of vibration, and this law is literally the response of Diva substance to force emanating from some conscious or unconscious source. Fourth, these, Devas of the Shadows, perform certain activities of an interesting and varied kind, but... P-H-O-U-G-H-T-A-N-D-F-I-R-E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S 645 Of such diversity as to make enumeration well nigh impossible. We might attempt with brevity to state a few of these functions, remembering ever that what can be predicated is among the physical plane and all be predicated in their correspondences on all the planes. This we can leave to the student to work out for himself. Begging him again to bear in mind that we are dealing with the devas on the evolutionary arc, which may be divided into the following classes, amongst many others. Class 1. The Special Agents of Magic. They are peculiarly susceptible to the building vibrations of the seven rays. Class 2. A group of Agnichatans who manifest as physical plane electricity. They are a group who are coming somewhat under the control of man, and will be more and more dominated by him. Class 3. A group who form the health auras of all the three middle kingdoms of nature, vegetable, animal and human, either collectively or individually. Man is coming into contact with them along medical lines and beginning somewhat to recognize them. One of the great errors into which the human family has fallen has been the endeavor to administer mineral drugs to man for medicinal purposes. It has resulted in a combination of diva substances which was never intended. The relation of man to the lower kingdom, and particularly to the animal and mineral, has brought about a peculiar condition in the diva world and has tended to complicate diva evolution. The use of animal food and the use of minerals as medicine in a lesser degree has produced a coming of diva substance and of vibrations which are not attuned to each other. The vegetable kingdom is in a totally different situation, and part of its karma has lain in the providing of food for man, which has resulted in a needed transmutation of the life. 646 ATRE Of that kingdom into the higher stage, the animal, which is its goal. The transmutation of vegetable life takes place necessarily.
regularly on the physical plane. Hence its availability is food. The transmutation of the life of the animal into the human kingdom takes place on denominated level. Hence the non-availability, esoterically understood, of the animal is food for man. This is an argument for vegetarian living which needs due consideration. Class 4. A very important class of etheric devas, as far as man is concerned, who are definitely the constituent substance of his centers. They occupy this position for karmic reasons, and are, from many angles, some of the most highly evolved of the devas of the shadows. They are distinguished by their ability to respond to a particular set of planetary vibrations in a peculiar manner, and in their essential essence, and in their own peculiar sphere enable man to react to ray stimulation. Each center is under the influence of one or other of the planets. In this fact lies the ability of man eventually through the agency of the centers to learn himself on the floor. With the sevenfold soul of the world. Class 5. We have here a very important group of devas, who are peculiarly active and esoterically dominant during this round. They are the agitators who form the center which vibrates to the measure of Kundalini in its many forms and demonstrations. This is the center at the base of the spine. In this center we have a very effective display of the two polarities, for the petals of the center which is the seat of Kundalini, and the fire or vitality which animates them are negative and positive to each other. This center is to be found in some form or other in all sentient beings and upon it largely depends. File 3. A. C. C. T-H-O-U-G-H-T-A-N-D-F-I-R-E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S-647 Consciousness at one of its seven stages. Continuity of existence. Perpetuation of species or reproduction on some or other of the planes. It might be of interest here to note that this center is literally a fourfold radiation, and the cross of the Holy Spirit, the equal armed cross, is its symbol. This four-petaled lotus is the result of evolution. In the first kingdom of nature, the mineral, through which a specific entity is manifesting, this center is a unity on etheric levels, for only one petal is to be seen. In the vegetable kingdom, viewing it as the expression of a great existence, two petals are becoming active. In the third kingdom, the animal, the center at the base of the spine will be found to have three petals, whereas in man, the lotus is vibrating in a fourfold manner. At each initiation of the great being who is manifesting through our planet, one of these petals becomes unfolded on etheric levels, so that at individualization, the four became active, and his self-conscious activity was brought right down onto the physical plane. The analogy can be seen typified at his great initiation which took place in the fourth round and the third root race. The correspondence between the third kingdom and the fourth, and their production of the esoteric seven is one of the lines of study for the occultist. As each of the petals of the etheric centers becomes vibrant, or in as one meant is brought about in Diva substance, a quickening takes place on allied levels in the cosmic etheric body of the planetary logos, and of the solar logos. Certain correspondences in the petals of the egoic lotus of the different units of the human family, and on cosmic levels in the solar and planetary egoic bodies become apparent. It should also be borne in mind that these basic centers, wherein the 